Hey, everyone. I know you've seen this lock, right? The American lock, uh, all the American lock products, they're very popular, both, you know, in the commercial market because they are still well made. I know that Master Lock owns them and has for a while, but they still use some pretty quality pins and parts and springs and bottom plates, etc. You're not going to do the crack off attack with our little fire plug. Uh, you're also probably not going to pick them trivially unless you put in some practice, which is why when you encounter these in the field, especially the uh, lower end series, not the government grade series, we often have, you know, students in our class learn how to and practice how to use the bypass attack on these. If you're not familiar, I mean, how many people? Is maybe maybe you're one of today's lucky 10,000, right? You've never seen the quote, um, it's called the American lock bypass, but it works on many, many similar products. If you have this tool, this looks like a little uh, lock pick maybe, but it is not a lock pick. As we say in class, if you're looking at the keyway, you're not putting this up into the pins. This goes down away from the pins. It reaches all the way through the keyway, right to the back of the plug and hits the actuator cam. You can actually flick and operate, and I might even throw in some animations or video clips here. You can operate, you can manipulate that tail side cam, which you have to, of course, turn in order to free up those ball bearings to, to pop the shackle. Looking at this right here, if I look at this, I've got, the, okay, the keys are up, key plugs are up here, keyway facing me, down away. All I have to do is get this far enough in so that it punches through and reaches the tail cam. Now that can be a little struggle sometimes. The more you do it, you, you really learn there's a lot of pressure and hunting around till it drops into place. If it doesn't feel like it's going for you, this, this one I got, all right, that one's pretty good. But let's, I really had to had to really palm it pretty hard. Something I often do, and if you have it in your field kit, I keep a bump hammer around. And if you have this down at the bottom of the lock, right? We'll do it again here. I'm gonna go all the way through the lock, push in and turn clockwise. To get it properly seated, I give it a little bit of counterclockwise bias, just a little bit of counterclockwise pressure, because that'll help line up the slot. And then some encouragement. If that's dropped in there, there we go. And it's, it's, when you first do it, it's more of a turn than you think. It's a lot of turning force to overcome that spring, but that pops her open. The problem is there are a number of protections, um, a ways to defeat this attack, and there's a lot of ways that your tool might not quite seat in the correct amount. And of course, if it's not in all the way, if you're only part way down the keyway and you try to turn, well, you can see someone actually did it to this tool. This is this is not timed and uh, synced correctly with the way they manufacture these at the Peterson Warehouse. You can start twisting this whole shaft and eventually even snap the little head off. That's no bueno. So if you run into a lock in the field and you're like, is this lock actually going to work? I don't know. And this is one I just pulled out of our bin of parts. I don't know where we got it, but I said, oh, is it going to be good for this uh, for this demo? Let's see. And I couldn't quite, you know, get her in there. And I'm trying here, and I'll give it a little bias and a little encouragement. Is this going to drop in? It doesn't quite feel, oh, I don't know if it's going to work or not. This might be an example of a lock, and I've got, a, I've got a few examples here, that might have the protection element that American Lock started putting in their products to what's called, you know, shield the rear side of the plug. They've, they have these, uh, all these locks were unshielded for the longest time. And then once, you know, Peterson Tools and others started selling these bypass drivers, they said, well, we got to do something. So they started shielding the back side. What does that actually mean? What does that look like? Well, I'll take a lock apart and I'll show you. So here is your plug, right? Here's the front face of the plug all the way through the rear side, completely unshielded. When we slide our bypass tool in, we actually come punching out right through the rear. So we can flick right here. This little swing allows us to operate and turn that actuator cam down in the lock body. So how do we prevent this, right? Well, we've got to, we've got to close up that backside hole, right? We've got to somehow block it or shield it. That is why American made these little spare parts, these little blocking wafers, these little discs, which drop right on the plug. You can see, doesn't change the fit in the housing. I can slide this all the way back down. It nestles where it belongs, but this means that now the rear side of that keyway is covered up. 
All right, well now that little blocking element's installed, so let's hope that we can find a way to still get this lock open. Of course, our bypass tool, that's not gonna get down there. It's not gonna fit. In fact, you can see if I try to drive it in, it's visually, I can just tell from doing this a billion times, this is not in far enough. What am I gonna do? Peterson Tools designed these. This is called their wafer breaker kit. And it's in the Hacko mat. It's here at Red Team Alliance. Uh, we don't have people do this in class because it's a semi-destructive attack. Although still, I would say it's actually surreptitious because you're, you're leaving marks, but they're marks that are deep in the lock that unless somebody forensically takes it apart and examines it, they're never going to see. What do these tools do? And more importantly, how do you use them? Because yes, they come with an absolute dog shit, uh, barely visible set of instructions. We'll just do it on camera because unlike my wife who would prefer to read 10,000 words rather than watch 10 seconds of YouTube video, I would gladly watch anything uh, in a video tutorial rather than, you know, actually pick up a book. So what am I gonna do here? Well, the idea is you have a punch tool and what I call a spreader tool. The punch, as it sounds, is meant to go in there and to spike directly into that thin steel plate because these little wafers, yes, they are made of steel, but they're not very thick steel. You can knock through that. We're going to blast a hole on one side here, a hole at the top, and those cracks should be enough if we then come in with this spreader tool to knock open a little kind of seam right in that wafer. How are we gonna hit that? Well, we used it before, let's use it again. We're gonna get a bump hammer out here. First, in the bottom of the keyway, you can kind of see that with the spike over on the right side as I'm looking at it. Push it in as far as I can. All right, a little tiny tap. Sorry, I'm pretty there. Now let's give her some encouragement. Bang, 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 bang. You can actually see it's going further in, further in, further in. You're going to keep hitting it until that small shoulder stop right there is butting up against that face plate. Now, looking at our keyway again, we're going to take our tool and spike kind of upward. Going to come in this way. You can see how far out we are. We must be a quarter inch of standoff between that shoulder and the actual faceplate. Let's start hitting again. Now we're not gonna get as far in. There we go, we just punch through the steel. We can't get all the way down because now we're, you know, we're beyond where that little figure eight plate is. But you can see we are about flush with the edge. Got out easily that time. Now we take our spreader tool, just like, and I love that they even made the bow of it look like the bow of the American lock key, kind of neat. We start to drop this down in there, a little bit of a tight fit, but she'll go. And you can see it's a little bit proud of the surface there. Not all the way dropped in. Let's see if we can make it drop in. Look at that, much further in. If we're lucky, we've now blasted a hole in that blocking wafer that'll give us the opportunity to come in with our bypass tool. All we gotta do is pop this out. Okay, wanna see if it works? Cross your fingers, cross your toes. Still gonna give this a little encouragement here. Maybe, doesn't feel like it's dropped all the way in. I'm hanging up slightly still. Something I even will do, I, I haven't done it as much on this tool, I even like to make kind of a shave action with a file or a grinder to make the tip of my bypass tool a little more spiky to drop into that slot for these types of scenarios. There we go. I literally felt it slip in in my hands. There we go, and we're open. Now from the outside, you all tell me, does this look damaged in any way? Does it look scraped up, scratched? I don't think I would notice anything. You'd have to actually pull this sucker apart and expect that there was something wrong in order to tell what has happened. So there is our blocking wafer. Cracked, spread, and punched open right where we needed it. 
Now, you might say, all right, so the blocking wafer, what if you pop this open, threw this away, put a new blocking wafer on, does that mean there's no forensics? Uh, I don't know about that. Let's have a look down in here. I know it's kind of dark. Yeah, the, we're getting some banding with this bright LED, but <laughs> yeah, it, it does not look good in there. If you know what you're looking for as a tech, yeah, th there's, there's a lot of ruination that has happened and it's, it's very obvious something's not right. But you, again, you'd have to be looking for it to be able to tell that something is wrong. Now, what about this one? Fresh off the rack. Uh, I don't actually know if there is a blocking wafer in here or not. It sure feels like it. Let's take a look and see, and then we'll try to test it yet again. Was there a blocking wafer? Yes, there was. Let's try to break it. Okay, we know our blocking wafer is installed. So once again, what do we want to do? We want our spike to the lower right, and then we want our spike upwards, again, on this right side. By the way, now is as good a time as any that I should mention. Pretty much all American Lock products typically use the same keyway. Big, small, thin, tall, they're all the same, except every once in a while. When you get a US government model, it will not be using that same keyway. You can see right here, the American lock leashy tool won't work. American lock bump keys obviously won't work. The American keyway is not what we have here. What is this key? When you come across a, a American lock that basically has, you know, kind of a C-shaped keyway instead of a Z-shaped keyway, that is actually using master lock. It's using their M11. Uh, you see that on some of the government model products and, you know, Master now owns American, so not the most foreign thing, but it does mean that most of these attacks won't work. However, in addition to all that, if you see a mark, uh, marking of, you know, U.S. government or any kind of official government or army role mark on an American lock, it also means that your bypass won't work, probably because they don't use key removable padlocks. They use key retaining padlocks, and we'll talk about that maybe in part two of this video. So... Basic civilian style, American keyway, should be bypassable, but we try to put our tool down in there and it just won't go, won't go. A lot of people, by the way, they will opt to put kind of a dot of Sharpie marker on their tool. They'll Sharpie marker it or nail polish it. And the rule is like, well, if I can get it in there, if I can still see the dot, I haven't dropped my tool in far enough, I know that I'm hitting something. And only if the dot disappears because you drive it even deeper, you say, oh, now I'm ready to bypass. It's a technique I definitely recommend. We see students do this all the time with their tools that they get to keep in our classes. So using our American Bypass Spike and Spreader, they are self-indicating whether they're in far enough. You drop this down, that's definitely not far enough, is it? I'm hitting, clearly hitting something. Get the hammer out punched right through, dropped right in, much further down, looking good. Can we pull that out of there? Little encouragement. Now where do we go? We've got our keyway right here. This middle part of the keyway, that's where we're coming in with our spike. Drop it in that side. Again, not very far in. Every tool's a hammer. You can feel it. You can feel it drop right through. There we go. Excellent. Pull that out of there. Time to come in with the spreader. Use it like a regular key going directly into the keyway. Not in far enough yet. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful hit. That slipped right in easily. Does that mean we're going to have an easier time getting our bypass tool in there? Well, let's find out. I can feel how far we are. Not far enough yet. A little bit further in. Not quite on her yet. There we go. You can even hear the sound. Did you catch that on the microphone? The sound difference. It's a much deader, more, more, more of a, it was a hollow strike against that thin metal, and then it punched its way through. Now we're in the right spot. There we go. Right on. Let's have a look 
at that blocking wafer. It's kind of jammed up in there. Can we courage it out? Yep, yep. And once again, kind of almost the same thing. We've even got flakes of metal. You can see it's a very similar punch effect. And there you are. Two wafers, same attack twice, same exact result twice. Now I'll replace that blocking wafer on here, reinstall it back in the system, and nobody's the wiser. Unless, of course, they know what they're doing forensically, and they take the lock apart and look at it. And yes, I know I didn't have the exact same model of blocking wafer, but if I did, Again, that's one level higher on sort of the anti-forensics side of things. The regular user comes along with their key. I mean, that lock's working just fine. They're not going to assume that anybody's been in there. The real neat thing, of course, if you do a bypass attack and you eject the core because you're trying to reassemble it and look like no one was in there, well, why not take the extra minute to take the core apart, measure those pins, maybe with a devious decoder card, and then you have the bidding cuts of the key. You could make your own key, and if you know that this lock is used on a target facility, maybe multiple places around a target facility, you then have the key. So I would, if I was on a penetration job and I saw an American lock on a perimeter fence or something like that, one of the first things I want to do, even if I could hop the fence, which is a stupid ass red teaming thing to do, it's, it's don't, don't be that red team, you know, actually show that you can penetrate barriers. But the first thing I want to do is, you know, bypass, pop this lock open, take the core out, make a key for myself. So then I can come up not only to that lock, but what if I find a lock on a shed inside the perimeter? What if I find a lock on a sensitive compartment or a sensitive facility, a wiring closet? I don't have to stand there with tools and hammers and everything else. I don't need to bypass anything. I've got the actual bitting. That is the value of these kinds of attacks. Doing it in a way that doesn't immediately arouse suspicion Someone's going to come along later, they're going to look at this lock and say, yeah, I mean, it's the same lock I've always been using, works with my key. But just because you were able to bust that wafer apart, then get in there and bypass it, decode it, make your own key, you come back later, you own that lock, you own that facility. I hope if you have ever bought these tools before that, uh, you know, it makes sense why they work the way they work and how to actually use them. If this was helpful, let me know down below. If you're interested in any of this, you know, always uh, Red Team Alliance. We're always happy to give you some training on this. Uh, we have, I'm here, I'm in Vegas right now. You can tell I'm not on my full-size green desktop. I'm on my field filming setup. Uh, but yeah, we're always happy to do trainings. We're always happy to answer your questions. Uh, I haven't done a giveaway in a couple of videos. I've been talking about flying and travel. I could have given away, a, you know, Jeff bridge gelato but uh the giveaway this week absolutely giveaway is going to be the wafer breaker kit and I'll, I'll throw in a peterson bypass as well so if you're not familiar with that you know we have the giveaway the link you sign up once you're good absolutely forever occasionally i get somebody that said oh, i i clicked a thing and I did the stuff and it said form expired and I go check and the names are always in the database. Don't worry. I don't know what, what happens with your web browser session, but if you're in the, the, the sign up for the giveaway, I'm sure you might win this. I'd hope for you to win this. I love giving back to the community. I love when people listen and learn. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know what you think of anything else. And uh, wherever you go, wherever you are, stay safe out there.